It has been three or four days since I shot the clear, so it has had plenty of time to dry, so we're going to move on to some of the finer details. Here I'm just going to spend a little bit of time positioning that tape so it covers the entire body line. I am just lightly pressing there just to establish that line where the body line needs to be. Then I'll flip over the toothpick and use the dull part to drive it down. Because the sharp part will poke holes through it and tear it. And then with another sharp blade, just cut it out. And just like on the windows, I'm only pressing just light enough to cut through the tape. I do not want to score the paint or the clear underneath. I don't understand why tape always sticks to me. As you can imagine that is somewhat time consuming so I'm going to jump ahead here and show you the finished product. I've masked off all the sections that need to be painted black except for this last line here. Take your time to make sure it's right because it's a lot easier to reposition some tape than it is to repaint a car. And do not forget the door jams. I will burnish the tape down with my fingernail down into the door jams. That is a spot where paint always seems to seep through. From here I will cover the entire car with white masking tape because I do not trust overspray. There is something very therapeutic about pulling masking tape and seeing just a perfect paint line. It's probably one of my favorite things about building.
Moving on to the chassis, I like to pre-fit all these parts. Especially things like the front spindles that need to turn, I will turn them and all of the keys they need to fit into just to ensure that they still turn. All this does is just knock off any paint buildup in there, as well as smoothing it out just to make it easier to turn. And I will tighten these just enough to have enough tension to keep the wheels pointed where I have them turned. Now as I'm building I usually talk out loud just to kind of give myself a basis to go off of for the voiceovers. Here I was really just complaining about the absolute lack of detail. There's no shocks, just no suspension whatsoever. During mock-up, I remember these being kind of fiddly, so I'm using a plastic cement here as opposed to super glue, just to give me time to position them before they set up. Now the parts that are never seen, I do not paint because when I glue them in, I want them to stick. I also didn't paint the wheel studs because Fujimi polycaps tend to fit kind of tight. Fujimi? Fujimi? Fujimimimi? I don't know how to pronounce them. In the last video I drilled a hole there because I do know a hose comes off. I plan on using some leftover spark plug wire from my Hemi build. I did not have any extra, so we're just not going to put a hose on it.
and I do apologize because an entire section is cut out here. I got a phone call and I did not realize that it just stopped filming. I figured it just cut out that one part then pick up right back over whenever I hit the ignore button, but no, it didn't. But you're not missing much, it's basically just me gluing in that back window. Remember in the last video how I said once this is all assembled you can't see the valve covers? That is why I didn't spend a lot of time painting them, because you cannot see them. And that wraps up the chassis. We're going to move on to the body next. Now, photo itch is a lot of work, which is why I'm going to be honest with you. The vast, vast majority of this was all done off camera. Now, that includes me not only bending and contouring the parts to the right shape, but also gluing them in. Here, I'm just basically setting them in place, just so you kind of know how it's done. The backup light is in the center of the tail light, so that part needs to stay white or clear. To get that super accurate clear red look, I just use a sharpie. These were extremely easy to do because I could just run along the outline of that and not even touch the center of it, and I'll be left with a perfect clear circle. The amber or orange color for the turn indicators is done pretty much the same way. Now I will make sure the red sharpie has time to dry so these colors don't bleed together. To glue them in, I like to use Bob Smith Super Gold Plus only because it does not haze and fog up the clear parts. That stuff will still damage clear parts, but only if you're stupid with it. A little bit of it goes a long way. I'm also applying the glue to just the edges and avoiding the main body, I guess is what you'd call it, of the clear. Of 
All the modern composite headlights have a black seal around them to keep out moisture. Here, I'm doing that with the Sharpie. Hopefully you can see that I'm not actually using the tip of the Sharpie, but I'm sticking mainly to the body of the felt tip. And I like to do it that way because I often get in a hurry and I've been known to slip and then just draw a big black line across the headlights. Now that is not a big deal because before the Sharpie dries it's easy enough to just wipe off but I don't like to cause myself any extra work. I have recently jumped onto the UV hardening glue bandwagon. This stuff is somewhat amazing. It's sticky enough to hold the part in place. Once you apply the light, it hardens instantly and it's super, super clear. The only downside I've seen so far is there is not a lot of it in that little pin. And I don't know why, but I'm wiping my fingerprints off as I go. I'm just going to get more fingerprints on it. I, I don't know why I do that. Since I'm using Photo Etch, we have just one metal transfer to apply here. Making sure this was centered was proving to be a bit of a challenge, so I measured the openings and I put a little dot on a piece of masking tape. That way I know exactly where to put that thing. Once again, I'm using the Super Gold Plus. I am tracing the outline of the window with a very thin bead. Remember, this stuff is still super glue, so it can cause damage if you get too thick with it. And the instructions weren't very clear here, which is why I like to mock up everything before I actually glue it in. These wipers need to be added to the window before you glue it all in place. Because once it's in place, you're not going to be able to fit anything underneath the cowl to put them in. Now I'm using just a very small amount, to me a super thin, just to hold them in place so I can still position them later. We also need to talk about the rear view mirror. Or the lack of one. This car is not going to have a rear view mirror. There is no glue or UV resin, anything that would hold it in place. It kept falling off and falling off. And I got to the point where I was afraid I was going to damage the clear. So I just left it off. Now with my big manly hands, I could not get this down in there, so I tried to use some tweezers, 
and I still end up dropping it. Now we have just one last thing to do with the body, and then we are done. And normally I like to seal all my decals in with clear, but I left these as the very last bit just so that they would stand out. And that wraps up the body and this video. I thank you again for watching.